So this is 2017 question one. It's sole trade or final account for M Mullen and your year end is the 31st of the 12th, 2016. So first thing you should always do is read down through the trial balance and label where everything is going to go. See if there's anything unusual in there that you need to be keeping an eye out for. Um, the first working then is stock at the end of the year at cost was €76,500. And it tells us that this figure includes damaged stock which cost €4,500 but now has a net realisable value of €3,000. So the rule here is that stock should be always valued at either the cost or the net realisable value, whichever figure is lower. So because the stock used to be worth 4500 and is now worth €3,000, it should be included in the accounts at the lower value, which is the €3,000. So take the €4,500 away and add on the €3,000, which gives you a stock figure of €75,000. Your stock always goes in two places. The first place is your current assets in the balance sheet and the other is in the trading account. Okay, and that's that working done. Next one is a disposal. Okay, so disposal. And we are told, provide for depreciation on delivery vans at the annual rate of 15% of cost from date of sale to the date of purchase. On the 31st of the 3rd, 2016, a delivery van which cost €40,000 on the 30th of the 9th, 2012, was traded in against a new van that cost €48,000. An allowance of €18,000 was given on the old van and the cheque for the net amount of this transaction was entered in the bank account but was incorrectly treated as a purchase of trading stock. These were the only entries made in the books in respect of this transaction. So... The only thing that they actually recorded in the books was the cheque, okay? And what they did was the cheque went correctly into the bank account, but they put it into purchases, the purchase of trading stock. But um, the purchase of a delivery van is not standard stock, so it should never have gone into purchases. So the first thing we need to do is adjust our purchases figure. And that's sitting in the trial balance at the minute at £536,000. 500 euro okay and you're taking the check okay so the new van was worth 48,000 euro and we were given an allowance of 18,000 euro for the old van which means that when we went to trade in our van the company gave us 18,000 euro off the value of the new van because we were trading in a van okay so if the new van was worth 48 and we were given 18 off it that means the check that we would have had to write was 30,000 euro so you're taking the figure for the check out and that gives you a new purchases figure of 506,500 euro. And purchases, as you all know, go into the trading account. Okay. The next step then, or step two, is depreciation on the old van. Okay. So you need to find out how much depreciation was written off on the van that you got rid of from the day, the day that you bought it until the day that you sold it. So we bought a van in the first year. Okay, The van was worth €40,000. The rate of depreciation is 15% per year. But when we bought it, we bought it on the 30th of the 9th, the 30th of September 2012 which means that we only had it for October, November and December. We only had it for three months in that first year. So three out of 12, okay? So that's 1,500 euro. That, that was 2012. We're doing our accounts for 2016. So 2013, 14 and 15, we had the van for full years, okay? So we're three full years, three full years. It's 40,000 euro. Multiply by 15%, multiply by three years, okay? And that's 18,000 euro worth of depreciation, okay? And in the final year, or this year, if you want to call it this year, the van's worth 40,000. We're writing it off by 15%, and you need to check and see what date did we sell it? 
well, we sold it on the 31st of the 3rd, which means that we had it for three months this year before we got rid of it. Okay, so that depreciation is 1,500 euro. Okay, I need to asterisk that because we're going to use that 1,500 again. So our total depreciation on the old van is 21,000 euro. That's our depreciation on the old van. Okay, it's 21,000 euro. The next step then is to calculate the gain or a if we made a gain or a loss, okay? Late gain or loss, okay? And for this, you're using a formula. So it's gonna be cost minus accumulated depreciation. That will give us the net book value, which is what it's worth. Then SP stands for sales proceeds or whatever we got for it. So that's usually the allowance figure. Minus the net book value, which we'll get up here, will give us either a gain if it's a plus or a loss if it's a minus. Okay, so the van cost us 40,000 euro. The depreciation was 21,000. So you're bringing that 21,000 up here. 21,000 euro, which means we had a net book value of 19,000 euro on that van, which, that, which basically means when we sold the van in our books, it was worth 19,000 euro. You were given an allowance, okay? So you were given 18,000 euro for the van. But in your books, you had a value at 19,000 euro. So obviously, we made a loss of 1,000 euro, okay? We had it valued at 19,000, whereas they only gave us 18,000 for it. So we made a loss. And when it's a loss, it goes into our selling and distribution expenses. And if it's a gain, that goes into our income, okay? The next step is to calculate the depreciation charge this year. This year on all of the vans, whether it's new, old or the ones that we had for the whole year. So we're going to start off with that old van. We had it for three months. So our depreciation charge is 1500 euro, which we calculated up here. And that's why I put those asterisks there. OK, so 1500 euro. OK, we then had a new van. The new van was worth um, 48,000 euro. We're depreciating it by 15%. And how many months do we have that for? Well, we got it on the 31st of the 3rd. So we're not going to depreciate for March. So we're going to start depreciation from April onwards. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. That's nine months. And you should always be calculating that on your fingers. Don't just be like, oh yeah, because you could get it wrong. 9 over 12. Okay, that's 5,400 euro in depreciation on the new van in the first year. And then there's some other vans. So we had a, a large amount of um, vans in our trial balance before we made any adjustments. And th they were worth more than just this old van. So you did have other vans that you had for the whole year. So you need to calculate the depreciation on the, those vans. So remainder. We had vans of 150,000 euro. And we, but we got rid of one van worth 40 okay that 40,000 euro worth of a van is in the 150,000 euro so that means we had vans of 110,000 euro for the whole year okay so if you think of it and this business had loads of vans it got rid of one how many vans were left over after we got rid of one well they were worth 150 including the van we got rid of so if you get rid of that van out there that means that the vans that we had for the full year were 110,000 euro and you're multiplying that by 15% Okay, and that gives you 16,500 euro. You're adding these three figures together to get your total depreciation charge this year, which is 23,400 euro. And that's the charge for the year. And the charge for the year, because it's delivery vans, delivery vans are used to, to distribute product. So it is selling and distribution expense. Okay. Next is the new accumulated depreciation. Okay, so you're starting off with your accumulated depreciation from the trial balance, which is 65,000 euro. That can be given to you um, straightforward in a straightforward way, or it could be given to you the way it is in this question. So we have in brackets the cost price of 150 and we have our net book value of 85 so the difference of those two figures which is the 150 minus the 85,000 gives us the depreciation that has been written off 
in total so far, which is 65,000 euro. And you're adding this year's charge. And that's 20, sorry, 23,400. So you're adding this year's charge and you're taking away the depreciation on the old van minus the disposal. If you want to call that old van, you can, which is 21,000 euro. So your depreciation from the trial balance, add on this year's charge and take away the depreciation that went with the old van because when you get rid of a van, all of the depreciation goes with it, okay? Take it out of the accounts, all, the accounts altogether. So my new accumulated depreciation figure is 67,400 euro. That's my new accumulated depreciation. And that is going to go into what the fixed assets going to be taken away from the fixed assets in the balance sheet. Okay. And the last step then is the new cost. Okay. So my new cost is um what we had in the trial balance which was the 150,000 euro plus your new van plus your addition the new addition which was the 48,000 euro worth of a van and minus the disposal the one that you got rid of which is the 40,000 euro van which leaves you with a new cost of 158,000 euro. So at the start of the year before any adjustments were made, we had vans worth 150,000 euro. We bought a new one worth 48, but we sold one worth 40. So our vans are now sitting at a worth of 158,000 euro. That is a fixed asset in the balance sheet. Okay. The next working is the suspense working. And suspense arises when this company obviously got the whole way through their accounts and got as far as the trial balance and then it didn't end up having the, a balance. It didn't balance when they added up the debit side and the credit side. Okay, So they had to open up what's called a suspense. Okay, And it's where they shove some figures into another type of another account just to make the trial balance balance for the time being. Then it's somebody's responsibility to fix the mistakes and then they can proceed with the actual accounts. So in this question or in any of these questions, you need to check and see what account that did they put figures into um, for to deal with the fact that they did, their T accounts didn't balance. OK, so in this question, you can see there in the trial balance, we have insurance and then in brackets, it says incorporating suspense. So 17,700 euro is our insurance figure. That figure is actually wrong because it has been changed to deal with the fact that we needed suspense. OK, so our job here is to fix this insurance uh, figure to make it the correct figure so then we can proceed with the accounts. So there's two problems always in these questions and you need to deal with them separately. The first thing is the suspense figure arises as a result of the incorrect figure for mortgage interest, although the correct figure had been entered in the, in the bank account. So what happened was they paid mortgage interest. They, the, the correct figure came out of the bank account, but they put the wrong figure into the mortgage interest account. So it's your job now to find out what the correct figure is for the mortgage interest. OK, so that's what I'm going to do now. So we have a loan. You need to check and see what the story is with the, with the mortgage. We have a mortgage of 180,000 euro and it's, we have to pay a 6% interest on that. So if the mortgage is worth 180,000 euro and we're paying 6% interest on that, the interest we should be paying for the full year is 10,800 euro. And that's the correct figure for a full year. So that's the figure that gets taken out at the bottom of the profit and loss as a minus, right? Check now and see in your trial balance how many months did they say they paid. Okay, it's actually the figure that's just above your insurance figure. It says mortgage interest paid for the first three months. So they paid interest for three months. Now this figure that I'm actually calculating is the figure for the whole year, which is 12 months. So I need to try and figure out how much is the interest charge for three months. So I'm going to say 10,000. 800 multiplied by 3 out of 12 okay and the amount for three months is 2700 euro now we know we paid that already okay so if the full amount that they have to pay is 10,800 and they've already paid 2700 that means they are still 
owing money. So how much is due to be paid? It's 8,100 euro. Okay. And that figure, not good for us to be owing money to the bank. So that's a current liability in the balance sheet. So now we need to identify what the issue is. We have just calculated that the correct figure for three months mortgage interest is 2,700 euro. And they have said in the trial balance there, mortgage interest paid for the first three months is 2,400 euro. So I'll show you now in T accounts what happened. I'll do them over here. We had a bank account and we know that the correct amount came out of the bank account, which is 2,700 euro. So this is an asset account. So debit is a plus, uh, credit is minus. So 2,700 came out and they did that correctly, 2,700. The double entry was incorrect. So they put the wrong figure into the mortgage interest account. And you can see that in the trial balance. They have 2,400 euro in there. So this is what happened. They had a credit of 2,700 and they had a debit of 2,400. Their debits and credits didn't add up. The whole point of the double entry system is that for every debit, we have a corresponding credit, okay? Didn't add up. So this is where suspense came into play. They had to open a suspense account. Okay, they had 2,700 on the credit side, but they only had 2,400 on the debit side. So think of it as a weigh-in scales. We need to put something here to make it add up to this. So we're going to have to show 300 euro in my suspense account to make it the debits and credits add up. So I have 2,700 on the credit side here. And between these two debit entries, I have 2,700 euro. Okay, so the suspense is built in in insurance. Okay, so insurance so the rules of the insurance account are applied to this an insurance account is an expense account so this side is the plus and this side is the minus okay so if i said to you how do we remove this 300 from the account you would say put it on this side 300 euro in here okay so if I have to put 300 euro on the credit side of the insurance account to get rid of the suspense, the credit side means subtract. So that means over here, I need to take away 300 euro for the mortgage interest. So what happened was when the suspense actually um, was put into the accounts, they would have had the insurance figure and they actually added on that 300 euro. So for me to take to get rid of it, I need to take it away. OK, and that's that first problem dealt with. OK, the next problem then is a VAT refund of 2000 euro entered only in the bank account. OK, so they got a VAT refund. A VAT refund is going to be money into our bank account. OK, so we got a refund of VAT. If you get a refund of anything, it's going to be money coming towards you. It's not money leaving you. OK, so. It was only entered in the bank account. So they had a bank account. They got a VAT refund of 2,000 euro. Same rules as up here. This is the plus side and this is the minus side. If they got a refund, it was money into the bank account. So it was 2,000 euro on the debit side. Okay. Um, that's all they did. So did their debits and credits add up? If that's the only thing they did, they definitely did not add up. So that's where suspense came into play. Okay. So if they had a debit entry of 2,000 and no credit entry, the suspense would have been 2,000 on the credit side, okay? So this obviously is wrong. Suspense should never actually be carried forward in the account. So it's our job to get rid of this here. We have a credit of 2,000. How do I get rid of it? You put it on the opposite side, which is 2,000 euro in here on the debit side. Same as up here. The suspense is built in with insurance. So insurance is an expense account. So the rules of an expense account apply. So this is the plus side and this is the minus side. So by me needing to debit it to get rid of it out of the insurance account, I need to add it in. Okay, so I'm adding 2000 up here and I'll say VAT refund. Okay. So basically what happened here was when the when they got the VAT refund, they only it only was shown in the bank account. There was no double entry. So 
suspense had to come into play then and they had to put a credit in the insurance account and by putting that in there they took 2000 euro away from the insurance figure they should never have done that so how are you going to undo it you're going to add it back in and that's why i'm adding it over here so now that account is basically closed off okay so we still only have one entry it's our responsibility now to complete the double entry which is the vat account vat account we only have, I'm just going to cover this, we only have a debit entry, which means that in the VAT account, it must be a credit entry that we need. So I'm going to put in here, 2,000 euro in the VAT account. That's what they should have done. Okay, so you then have to complete your um, double entry, just in terms of the figures. The VAT in the trial balance is sitting on the debit side which is 6400 euro okay so it's an asset and um, so this is the plus side and this is the minus side because it's an asset i know it's an asset because it's sitting on the debit side and if i'm crediting it i'm taking it away so i'm taking that 2000 euro away and that's been paid already which means that we're still due to get 4400 euro from revenue okay so basically what happens is I was owed 6,400 euro. That was still being shown in my accounts as me being owed 6,400. But I had been paid 2,000 euro already. So we need to show that we were already paid 2,000 euro. So of the 6,400 that was owed to me, I am after getting paid 2,000. So I'm still owed 4,400 euro. And that's a current asset in the bank, uh, the balance sheet, sorry. So if it's a debit, it's going to be an asset. And if it's credit, it's going to be a liability. VAT can actually be either. It can be either an asset or a liability. So you need to be careful with that one. The next working is working number four. And it says patent, which incorporates four months investment income, is to be written off over a five-year period commencing in 2016. So there's kind of two things really involved in this. The first thing is patents, which is, 68,000 euro in the trial balance incorporates four months investment income so that figure there has investment income in it so that account has investment income that it shouldn't have investment income in it investment income is a totally separate account so we need to fix this that 68,000 euro is the wrong figure for patents so the first thing we need to do is we need to find out what what is the correct figure for four months investment income and we need to remove it from that so we can find out what the correct patent is. Then once you have the correct patent figure, you can then work on writing it off over the five years. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the correct investment income figure. So investment income. Okay. So we have an investment in this question of 200,000 euro. Okay. It says investments a three percent investments and we got it on the first of may 2016 so it's eight percent oh sorry three percent interest okay but we'd be getting three percent if we had it for the whole year we only got this investment we only bought this investment on the first of may so we're not going to get a full year's interest we're going to get the eight months that we actually had it we got it from may june july august september the whole way on to december is eight months so we calculate that on your finger fingers so we should be getting four thousand euro in investment income and that's the figure that goes into the bottom of our profit and loss p and l as adding it in okay now that's for eight months it says that the patent figure incorporates four months investment income. So if that's for eight months, if 4,000 is for eight months, you need to find out what four months is, which is obviously a half. But we'll just show you how to do it just in case it's, it's not as straightforward as that. So if 4,000 4, euro is the amount that we should be getting and we know that that's for eight months. So you are trying to find out what four months out of the eight months is, which is 2,000 euro, okay? So of the 4,000 euro we should be getting, we've already pay, been given 2,000. So we're still due another 2,000 euro. Okay, 2,000 euro paid. So that means we're still due. We are due to be given 2,000 euro. That's good for us to be getting money. So that's a current asset in the balance sheet. Okay, now 
we've calculated the four months. There's four months shoved into that account. We need to get rid of it. So I'm going to show you into the accounts how, why I'm about to do what I'm going to do. So what happened was we had a bank account. Okay. Bank. We have investment income. And we have patents. Okay. So we were paid four months investment income, which I just calculated was 2,000 euro. Okay. So 2,000 euro came into my bank account. Bank is an asset. So this is a plus and this is a minus. That's how I know it's going in there. Investment income is a gain account. So the credit side is a plus and the debit side is a minus. Patents is an asset account. So the debit side is a plus and the credit side is a minus, right? So we got money into the bank account on the debit side. Now the double entry should be a credit in the investment income account, but they accidentally used the patents account. So when they did debit in here, they credited the, the patents of 2,000 euro, okay? By them doing that, they reduced the patents by 2,000 euro. By putting the 2,000 on the credit side of the patents account, it reduced the patents figure by 2,000 euro. Okay, so how am I going to take this 2,000 out? I need to put it on the opposite side. So 2,000 on the debit side means I need to add it back in up here. 2,000 euro investment income error. Okay, and then the correct double entry should have been 2,000 euro in here, which I calculated up here. Okay, so I actually completed it up here, the double entry. So I'll just go over that again. 2,000 euro came into our bank account on the debit side. That was done correctly. There's nothing to worry about there. Now the double entry should have been a credit, obviously, because every debit needs a corresponding credit. It should have went in here, but instead they put it into patents. And patents is an asset account, so the asset account uh, rules apply. So debit is an added on and a credit is a minus, right? So if they have put it on the credit side, that means they reduce their patents. So for us to fix the patents figure, we need to put it on the debit side, which is adding it back in. So that's why I'm adding it over here. And that's my investment income element of this question done. Now I'm at the stage where I know the correct patents figure before the mistake happened. So the correct patents figure was actually 70,000 euro. So before we made that investment income error, the patents were worth 70,000 euro. And now we're on to the second part of this. So the patents are to be written off over a five year period commencing in 2016. So they're written off over five years. Okay, so if they're worth 70 and we're writing it off over five years, that means we are writing off 14,000 euro every year and um, that is an expense and that's going into the admin expenses it's not really related to selling so put it into admin so being written off means it's it's like depreciation except it's called amortization so we're writing the 70,000 euro off every year so we're writing off by 14,000 euro this year so my new patents figure is 70,000 minus the 14,000 which is 56,000 euro and that is an intangible fixed asset in the balance sheet okay and then next year we'll write that off by another 14,000 and so on for five years and then it'll be gone out of the accounts altogether. Okay, that's that working done. The next working is working number five and that's provision to be made for both investment income due and mortgage interest due. And we did investment income already in working number four with the patents and we also did debenture interest or mortgage interest on in working number three and um, which was the suspense. So you can just, I just wrote, Working number five, done already. You can say what workings they're done in, but you do not have to do that. 
Um, next, working number six is a creditor who was owed seven thousand six hundred euros. So remember, a creditor is someone we owe money to. So we owed someone seven thousand six hundred euro. They accepted office equipment with a net book value of six thousand five hundred euro in full settlement of the debt. So first of all, first thing that you should notice there is we owed them seven thousand six hundred euro, and they accepted something worth six thousand five hundred euro. And they wrote off the rest of the debt. So we owed them 7,600. They accepted worth something worth 6,500. So straight away you should notice there that we got a discount. Okay. Um, the office equipment had a cost of 11,000 euro. And no entry was made in, res- in the books in respect of this transaction. Then it asks us to provide for depreciation on office equipment held at the end of 2016 at a rate of 20% of cost. So we'll start off with our creditor's figure. Creditor's figure um, was in the trial balance, we haven't adjusted it yet, 78,000 euro. So our total amount that we owed to all of our creditors was 78,000 euro. Now, we reduced that by 6,500 euro because we gave them office equipment with that worth that amount. So I'm gonna write, office equipment okay so 6500 euro of our creditors was written off because we gave them a piece of office equipment then we got a discount because they accepted 6500 euro for some when we owed when we owed them 7600 euro so we got a discount okay and we're reducing it by another 1100 euro because we got that discount so the new creditors figure the new amount that we owe our creditors is 70000 400 euro and that is going to be a current liability in the balance sheet we owe that money to our suppliers okay i'm also going to register the discount so we have a discount already in the trial balance as 3200 euro on the credit side discount received is a gain as well so that is going to be adding on the 1100 euro so So our new discount figure is 4,300 euro. And that is a gain in the profit and loss. Profit and loss or income, whichever you want to label it, okay? So that's the creditors and the discount dealt with. Now we have to sort out the whole office equipment thing. So we had office equipment uh, in the trial balance worth 25,000 euro. Okay, so in our trial balance, we have office equipment worth 25,000 euro. Fixed assets are always recorded at cost price. Okay, so when we're taking out the piece of equipment that we gave to our creditor, we need to take it out at cost price. And the cost price of the piece of equipment that we gave to our creditor was 11,000 euro. So you need to take the 11,000 out, not the book value, the cost. Okay, so I'll say creditor minus the creditor and that leaves my office equipment at a value at 14,000 euro our our cost price okay and that will go into our fixed assets in the balance sheet okay now I need to sort out the depreciation so it says provide for depreciation office equipment held at the end of the year so how much office equipment did I have at the end of the year? I had 14,000 euro because this happened throughout the year. So at the end of the year, I had office equipment worth 14,000 euro and I'm depreciating that by 20%. So my depreciation charge for office equipment is 2,800 euro this year. That's not really related to selling too much. So we'll put it in as an admin expense. Okay. Now, complete the double entry. We need to find out what our um, new accumulated depreciation is. I'll do that down here. New accumulated depreciation is what I had in the trial balance, which was 10,000 euro. And that's coming from the cost of 25 minus the net book value. That's actually in the column of 15. So it's the 25 minus the 15 gave me that 10,000. Then you're going to add on this year's charge. 
this year's charge is the 2800 euro okay and do not forget we got rid of a piece of equipment so we need to get rid of any depreciation that we had on that office equipment okay so it cost us 11000 euro but when we got rid of it when we got rid of it it was worth only 6500 euro uh, so minus the disposal so if it was worth 11 when we got it and now it's only worth 6500 i should have wrote um 11500 Eleven thousand minus the six thousand five hundred. That means we had written off four thousand five hundred euro between from the date that we got it until we sold it. So to get our depreciate our accumulated depreciation, it's what we had in the trial balance. Add on this year's charge and take away the depreciation that was on the piece of equipment that we got rid of. Okay, so our new accumulated depreciation figure is eight thousand three. 100 euro and that's my new accumulated depreciation and that is going to be taken away from the fixed assets in the balance sheet okay that is that working completely finished now and i'm going to move on to the next one let's push this up so working number seven is next and that is Provide for depreciation on buildings at a rate of 2% of cost per annum and it was decided to revalue the buildings at €800,000 on the 31st of the 12th, 2016. So this is buildings depreciation, depreciation slash reval on buildings. So the first thing you need to do is find the buildings depreciation this year. We're depreciating at 2% of cost per annum. So €680,000 is our cost price coming from the trial balance and we're depreciating by 2% per year. So that's €13,600 is my charge this year and that's my admin expense in the profit and loss. Okay, I'm then going to add on any previous depreciation that I had, which is your 680000 in the trial balance uh, in the cost bracket minus the 595 in the actual trial balance so my previous depreciation is 85,000 euro so my total depreciation before the revaluation happened was 98,600 euro okay i will just leave that there like that for this for the minute um now is when we're going to actually deal with the revaluation. So our current value, find out what your current value is. Okay, so I'll do that over here. Current value before the revaluation was 680,000 euro. We're revaluing. Reval amount is 800,000. So our buildings were worth 680,000 and we're revaluing them to 800. They're actually worth 800. So we've got an increase there of 120,000 euro, okay? Um, when you're revaluing re -value an asset, any depreciation that was previously written off on that asset gets brought back down to zero. So we had 98,600 euro in, in depreciation. That's been brought back down to zero. It's been taken out of that and put into the reval reserve. So the 98,600 take away the 98,600 leaves you at zero okay so in your balance sheet you'll have a fixed asset you have buildings at cost 800,000 euro no accumulated depreciation minus from the fixed asset in the balance sheet will just be nothing okay and we're going to complete our double entry now which is the revaluation reserve you have to open a revaluation reserve and in there will go your increase in value which is your 120,000 plus your accumulated depreciation that had been previously written off which is your 98,600 euro so your revaluation reserve figure is 218,600 euro and that figure is going into your financed buy section in the balance sheet and that's that working finished so start off by getting your 
depreciation on the buildings for this year, your charge for this year, add on any previous depreciation and that'll give you a new accumulated depreciation. Then start with your revaluation, check what your current value is, what's your revalued amount, how much has it gone up by. Write off all of the previous depreciation and put the increase plus the depreciation into a revaluation reserve. The next working is working number eight and if a check for 700 euro had been received on the 31st of the 12th 2016 in respect of a debt of 1200 euro previously written off as bad. So we got a check for a debt that we've previously written off as a bad debt. The debtor wishes to continue trading with Mullen and has undertaken to pay the remainder within one month. So we previously written off a debt of €1,200. We got a cheque for €700 and the debtor wants to pay the rest of us, the rest of the, the, of the debt within a month. So the rest of the debt is the £1,200 minus the €700, which is €500. No entry have been made in the books in respect of this transaction. So it's a bad debt recovered. Um, we got paid €700 and they're going to pay us the extra 500 euro at some point next month okay within one month so the first thing you need to do when you've got a bad debt recovered the full debt the 1200 euro has to go in as an income okay as a gain so you're basically undoing the bad debt so when the bad debt happened um you would have written off 1200 euro as an expense in the profit and loss account, you're undoing that now by recording it as a gain, okay? And that's always what you have to do with a bad debt recovered straight away, the full amount that's recovered in as a gain in the profit and loss account, okay? You got a check, okay? So if you got a check, you need to put it into the bank. No entry is made, so we need to complete this whole transaction. So our bank figure from the trial balance is 70,300 euro. We got a check, that's gonna be money in, Sorry, that's 70,300 euros on the credit side. So it's a minus, it's a liability. So put the brackets around it. We got a check put into the bank account. We got paid a check. So we got a check of 700 euro. This, this 70,300 is an overdraft. That's what it's brackets around. We got money in, so that's going to reduce the overdraft. So we now are in an overdraft of 69,600 euro. Okay, and that's a minus. And that's now our bank overdraft figure. We owe 69,600 euro to the bank. That's not good. So it's going to be current liability in the balance sheet. Okay. Next is your debtors. Okay. It's, this is going to affect your debtors. This person has once owed us 1,200 euro and obviously they went bankrupt. So we wrote it off as a bad debt. Now their business has come back to life. So we're undoing the bad debt of 1,200 euro. They paid us 700 euro. So that came into our bank account and they're going to pay the other, the remainder, which is 500 euro at some point next month. Someone that owes us money is called a debtor. So we need to add that 500 euro into our debtors figure. We haven't adjusted debtors yet. So it's 70,500 in there and you're adding in the 500 euro that will be paid by this debtor. So still to pay. So all of our other debtors is 70,500 and we're adding on another 500 that's going to be paid by this debtor that's after going back into business. So 71,000 euro is our new figure and that is a current asset in the balance sheet. Okay and that's that working done. The next working then is working number nine and that is no record had been made in the books for goods in transit transit at the end of 2016. The invoice for these goods had been received showing the recommended retail selling price of 16,000 euro which is cost plus 25 percent so this is goods in transit goods in transit and what that means is there is currently purchases in a van somewhere on the way to us we have bought them but they just haven't actually arrived yet so no entry had been made in the book so we need to put this into the accounts correctly so it's telling us that the goods that are on the way have a selling price of 16,000 euro so that means that when we actually go and sell them we're going to get 16,000 euro for them okay selling price is 16,000 euro and that's cost plus 25% so that's 125% okay 
if we're selling them for 16,000 euro, we're not going to buy them for 16,000 euro because we want to make a profit on them. So when we sell them, they're going to be, we can sell them for 16,000 euro, but we didn't buy them in for that price. We know that that 16,000 euro represents the cost plus 25% profit. So that means that 16,000 euro represents 125%. So the cost price is 100%. So to find your cost price into your calculator, 16,000 euro divided by 125 multiply by 100, which means that we're actually buying the goods in for 12,800 euro. So just say it's tea bags. We're buying the tea bags for 12,800 and we're going to sell them for 16,000. Okay? So the purchase purchase price, the cost price is the 12,800 and that's the figure we're going to continue with now. Okay? We have bought these goods, so they should should be included in our purchases figure. So add it into purchases. But the last time we adjusted purchases was in our um disposal working, which was working number 2. And that figure was 506500 and I'm adding the 12,000 in. I bought another 12,800 euro worth of goods. Okay. GIT goods in transit. And that leaves my purchases as 519300. Okay. If I got an invoice, that means I haven't paid for them yet. Okay. So what is the name of someone that we owe money to? It's our creditors. Creditors and I think I adjusted those before yes I did in working number six it was 70,400 and I need to add in the 12,800 euro okay so uh, that leaves my creditors at 83,200 euro and the last thing is my stock Okay, we're now at the end of our financial year, so I'm not going to sell those twelve thousand eight hundred euro worth of tea bags this year. I'm going to be using them next year, so they need to be included in the closing stock. My closing stock figure from working number one, working one, was seventy five thousand euro plus the twelve thousand eight hundred euro that are still en route, which leaves it being eighty seven thousand eight hundred euro. So what I did here was the 16,000 euro is the selling price. I need to find out how much I'm actually paying for them. If the 16,000 is cost, which is 100% plus 25% profit, that's then worth 125%. I want to find what the cost price is, which is 12,800 euro. And I'm adding it into purchases, creditors and stock. Okay, now label where the things are going to go. This is going to go to trading. Then creditors, current liability in the balance sheet. And stock is current asset in the balance sheet and also into the trading. And just be careful with that. Make sure you're labeling everything. And when you're like these, all these three figures have been adjusted before. So make sure that you're putting a line through your purchases figure and working two. Put a line through your creditors figure and working six. And make sure you're putting a line through that stock figure in working one. So that when you go and do your accounts, you are putting in the correct figure, the most recent figure. Okay. Then the next working is working number 10. It's the last working. And it is goods taken by Mullen for own use during the year were not recorded. So when the owner of a business takes goods for their own use, it's called drawings. Okay, These goods had a retail value of €4,800, which is cost plus 20%. So it's going to be drawings. Okay, so if we were to sell these, we would have got 4,800 euro. Okay, that's the selling price. Now, we didn't actually sell them to ourselves. We just took them. Okay, so if the 4,800 is the selling price, which represents cost plus 20%, that means that's worth 100. That's basically 120%. So same thing as above, you need to find out what the cost price was, which is 100%. So those goods that they took were actually worth 4,000 euro. So basically the owner took goods worth 4,000 euro out of the business. Now if he had sold them, he would have got 4,800 euro, but he just took them and they were worth 4,000 euro. So you need to take it away from purchases. So he took goods, they would have been included in purchases. Purchases. Now I'm literally just after adjusting that and working nine. 
So I'm putting a line through the 519, 300, and I'm taking that 4,000 euro out of that. The owner took things out for his own use, which is drawings. So my final purchases figure is 515, 300. Complete the double entry. It's drawings. We had drawings in the trial balance of 15,600 euro plus this 4,000 euro of purchases that he took. So that leaves it at 19,600 euro. So I'll, I'll just label that as purchases. Trading is where the purchases goes. I mean, see the way I've put a line through this figure because I, I readjusted here. And then my drawings figure goes into the finance by as a minus. Okay, and that's all of your workings done. You're now ready at this point to move on and do the trading profit and loss account and balance sheet. So this is the trading profit and loss account. You're getting 75 marks for the trading profit and loss account and 45 marks then for the balance sheet. So um, you're starting off there with your trade and profit and loss account um, heading. Make sure you've given it the full heading to get that one mark. You don't want to be throwing away silly marks like that. Um, starting off then, sales figure. That's coming straight from the trial balance. No balance, no adjustment there. Then we've got less cost of sales. Starting off with your opening stock of €66,000 coming straight from the trial balance. Then adding in your purchases figure of €515,300. 10 marks for that. We adjusted it multiple times in our working so that is why it's worth so much uh, marks then we've less our closing stock again seven marks coming for that closing stock figure of eighty seven thousand eight hundred euro and um, because obviously there's a few workings involved in that as well that gives our cost of sales of nine hundred and uh, four hundred ninety three thousand five hundred euro take that from our um, sales figure and you get your gross profit figure of two hundred ninety eight thousand five hundred euro then less our expenses of our starting off with our admin, um, which is our patent written off of fourteen thousand five hundred coming from a working salaries and general expenses we didn't adjust so that's coming straight from the trial balance rent we never adjusted so that's coming straight from the trial balance insurance we did that was our suspense working then uh, depreciation of office equipment that came with the working on the creditor and the discount then we've got depreciation on the buildings of thirteen thousand six hundred so that was just before. The revaluation took place. Then we have selling and distribution expenses. We've lost on the sale of a van of one thousand euro. We've depreciation on the delivery van of twenty three thousand four hundred, and we have commission coming straight from the trial balance. So that commission can be either a debit entry or a credit entry in the trial balance. If it's a if it's a debit, it is a sales commission. So that's why it's going into selling and distribution because it's related to sales. Then we have our operating income. We have a bad debt recovered of 1,200 for that for that debtor that has now come back into business. We have a discount included profit on sale. So you can just call that discount. Don't worry about the profit on sale part um, of 4,300 euro. That's coming from that um, creditor working. Then we have, that gives us our operating profit. So Operating profit is 57,400 and then we have our investment income and our mortgage interest separate. So our investment income is 4,000 euro, you're adding that in, that's coming from the working with the patents and our mortgage interest which is 10,800 euro and that's coming from the suspense working. That gives us, we end up then with a net profit of 50,600 euro and that is what we'll carry forward to our balance sheet. Then moving on to the balance sheet. We have this four columns here. Don't worry too much about the four columns. If you're used to using three, that's totally fine. Um, I usually teach with three columns. So what I would do is I would start off with your tangible fixed assets and then have your intangible underneath it um, and then continue on the same. OK, so don't worry. Too, don't let the four columns confuse you. So we're starting off. I'll read it as it is in this in this solution anyway. So we're starting off there with our intangible fixed assets. Just actually a point to note there. There's no marks for the heading, but make sure you still have a full heading because marking schemes change. You might get a mark for that one. So you'll never know where the mark is lying. So make sure you've got those proper headings in. So intangible fixed assets of a patent is fifty six thousand euro. That's coming from our new patents figure in our workings. Then we have. Our tangible fixed assets, we've got buildings of 800,000, that's the revalued amount. 
minus no depreciation because when you have a revaluation all of the depreciation goes with it and that leaves us with a net book value of eight hundred thousand euro we have our office equipment of fourteen thousand euro at cost that came from that working with the creditor as well and um, minus our depreciation accumulated depreciation in the same working of eight thousand three hundred which gave us a net book value of five thousand seven hundred euro our delivery vans all of that information is coming from working number two our cost um, is 158,000 minus the, the depreciation of 67,400 leaves us with a net book value of 90,600. Then we do our totals and this is the total then that we're going to carry forward. So next, it, it, sorry, if you did it with this, just the three columns, you would have this figure, the 896,300, this one, and underneath it, you would have your patents figure and you'd be adding that in then with your investment. So your financial is, assets is um 200,000 that's coming from straight from the trial balance then we have our current assets we start off with stock of 87,200 that was adjusted a couple of times as well then our debtors less our provision so we didn't actually have to adjust that provision in this question but you may be asked to do that so make sure you know how to do it so a provision is when we set money aside for for people that we reckon will not pay us okay so of the 71,000 owed to us 3,500 euro may not pay us so we're showing a net figure of 67,500 then we're due to get more investment income worth 2,000 euro and our VAT then was also working in suspense so that's 4,400 euro due back to us from revenue we have our creditors then amounts fallen due within one year so that's our current liabilities we have creditors figure of 83,200 euro so good few marks going for that one there as well six marks I think that's the most so far in this quest in the balance sheet then we have our bank figure that came from the uh, bad debt recovered working and then we have our paye prsi and usc there was no adjustment on that and you're still getting two marks for that carrying it straight over from the trial balance then we have mortgage interest due of eight thousand one hundred euro that is coming from our suspense working so we have 161,700 coming into the business this year Oh, sorry, next year, and um, we have 182 um, going out. So that's not a good position to be in. They're only getting 161,700 euro in within the next year, but they're due to spend 182,000 euro 500 within the next year. So that's not good. So that's why they have a minus then of 20,800. They're spending 20,800 more than they have coming in. So you then need to take that away. So 20,800 away from the one one five two three hundred leaves us with our balance our net current uh, our total net assets of one million one hundred and thirty one thousand five hundred euro now this is the value of the business so what how where do they get their money from so we have our creditors amounts falling due after one year so things you have to pay back after one year we have a six percent fixed mortgage of one hundred eighty thousand euro then we have our capital and reserves we've capital coming straight from the trial balance on the first of the first 2016 of 701,900 euro our revaluation reserve then is coming from our workings and um, you're adding that in and we have our net profit figure that we've carried forward from our profit and loss account then we're finally we take away our drawing so things that we've taken from the business and um, two marks of that which leaves us with 951,500 euro you're adding that then to the 180,000 euro to give your capital employed figure of one one three one five hundred which is the same as our first balance and that's what you're hoping for okay so make sure you've got this the correct layout proper headings and you do you don't really need to do this but if you have time to label your workings then do so because it will help the examiner